Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about uh, drugs that act on central nervous system, or you can say this is the introductory lecture uh, to the anesthesia. Uh, the basic word uh, you can use for these drugs or study of these drugs is psychopharmacology. Psychopharmacology. Basically, uh, this is a Greek word. And uh, it is a combination of three Greek words. Uh, psycho means mind or soul. Pharmacon means drug. And logos mean rational study. So basically it is defined as the study of drugs affecting soul and mind. Now uh, you can think here that why I have started my lecture with uh, uh, the drugs or the terms that deal with soul. Basically um, a human behavior or an animal behavior is uh, you can say manipulated or created or affected by some exogenous or endogenous molecules. Uh, if we talk about endogenous molecules these are called as neurotransmitters basically these are produced within the body and these neurotransmitters are linked with the behavior of an animal and what about exogenous molecules basically all those molecules that are synthetically or lab uh, created in lab that are analogs of these neurotransmitters when injected into the body they will produce the same behavioral effects so uh, these drugs are called as psychoactive drugs if we define uh, this, these are the drugs which influence or enhance mental activity during period of mental or psychic disorders. Which means that if an animal is having some psychic or mental disorders, these drugs are basically injected or administered to those animals to influence those psychic disorders, to bring animal back to the normal mental well-being. Now, uh, if you talk about these neurotransmitters and their link uh, with different human behavior or animal behavior, so we have uh, first stress condition or stressful behavior. Stress means, you should remember, the stress means cortisol. Whenever animal will be in distress, you are going to have increased cortisol levels in the body. Next uh, is depression. Depression means serotonin. Then there is excitement. Excitement means adrenaline. And last is happiness, that means dopamine. So you can see that uh, these are different neurotransmitters. And these different neurotransmitters basically uh, are secreted in different behaviors or they influence different behavior. So uh, these are psychoactive drugs. And uh, if I have written this, that physical, or, sorry, psychic or mental disorders, basically what these disorders or behavior problems cause in the animal, they cause number one, anxiety they can cause tension in animal now what is anxiety anxiety is basically it is apprehension of danger that an animal uh, sees some uh, thing like even uh, you can say a human being and he sees that that human being is approaching him directly so what will that animal get that animal will get anxiety stress so anxiety is that apprehension of danger. Yani ke khof ko perceive karna. The animal now knows ki ab uske saath kuch hone wala hai, kya kuch dangerous situation hai. So that is called anxiety. What is tension? Tension is defined as feeling of nervousness that makes an animal unable to relax. So basically, it is a state of inner unrest. And because of that, basically, you can say uh, mental and psychic disorders cause anxiety and tension, depression, these things in the animal. And these psychoactive drugs basically treat uh, these uh, like mental uh, psychic disorders and they influence the uh, behavior of the animal. That's why we call them psychoactive drugs or uh, two other names of these drugs are, uh, we can also name them as psychotropes or anti-psychotic drugs. Uh, next, uh, before like going towards anesthesia, there is one more thing that uh, you should know is extra pyramidal effects. 
Uh, okay, extrapyramidal is basically in anatomy, it is a neuronal network uh, that is a part of a motor system. And uh, this extrapyramidal neuronal network has the job of uh, controlling some involuntary reflexes and movements, uh, like coordination. But I'm not going into detail of that extrapyramidal tracks. But uh, one thing you should know here is that uh, extrapyramidal effects are generated by those extrapyramidal neuronal networks that is a part of motor system. And if you define it, it is uh, defined as involuntary movements that you can't control. Simple. Uh, uh, how these extrapyramidal effects can happen, or why I'm talking about while uh, telling you about these psychoactive drugs. Basically, these effects can be uh, seen or experienced after eating these psychoactive drugs or antipsychotics. After eating antipsychotic drugs, these effects can appear. And uh, what are the symptoms of these effects? This include tremors, water tremors. These are involuntary movements of muscles. Then there is dysarthria. What is dysarthria? Basically, it is called as slur speech. That uh, the muscles that basically are involved while speaking, uh, those muscles are not uh, consciously or like voluntarily controlled. So there will be slur speech that is called as dysarthria. Then there will be akathisia. What is akathisia? It is movement disorder that is characterized by uh, inner restlessness. Or uh, there will be, there can be like, there are many extrapyramidal symptoms. There will be involuntary facial movements. Then, then there will be uh, dys tonia that muscles will be contracting uncontrollably so uh, these are extrapyramidal effects uh, and well, there is one thing that knowing the difference between these terms knowing these uh, what does these terms mean tremors scissors epilepsy and uh, what is the difference between tremors and like scissors spasm it is important because jab tak aapko ye in terms ki basics nahi pata hongi you can't uh, be understand during this anesthesia. So I will make a separate video or uh, lecture on uh, these terms where I'll just elaborate what are the difference between tremor, scissors, spasm, epilepsy, etc. So uh, after having this background knowledge, uh, now we can shift towards anesthesia. Basically, anesthesia is derived from a Greek uh, word that is called any anesthesia. Any anesthesia means insensibility. So this insensibility uh, can be happening in the whole body or just to a part of the body. So uh, what are the components of the anesthesia? Components of anesthesia. There are four components of anesthesia. Number first is unconsciousness. Number two is analgesia. Analgesia, what is analgesia? Basically it is loss of pain, pain relief. Number third, Anesthesia should be reversible. Number four, there should be amnesia. These are four basic components of the anesthesia. That during anesthesia, animals should be unconscious. Animals should not feel any pain. There should be no pain sensation. And that is called as analgesia. Then anesthesia should be reversible. That if animal is getting into unconsciousness, it should be able to come back from that state to the conscious state. If it is irreversible, definitely the animal will die. That is, we can't term it as anesthesia. That is when you can say poisoning or like lethal killing of animal. So uh, anesthesia should be reversible. Um, then there is amnesia. Amnesia is called as or defined as loss of memory. What does it mean that uh, when you have a patient and you are going to uh, give that patient anesthesia, animals should not remember the events of that uh, surgery or events that happened during that anesthetic time period. When you have given the surgery to the animal, when you have given the anesthesia, you don't need to remember all the things that you have So there should be amnesia, loss of memory. What should ha happen at that time, you should not remember that. But you can see we have two more uh, conditions. Number one is called as sleep. Number two is coma. In sleep, animal is unconscious. In coma, animal is unconscious. Sleep is reversible. Coma is also reversible. There is no memory in that. But we can't say that uh, these two conditions, we can't say that this is anesthesia. Coma is not anesthesia. Sleep is not anesthesia. So how we can actually define this term anesthesia? The definition of Anesthesia basically is uh, formulated by these four words. It is defined as the clinical discipline concerned with reversible production of unconsciousness with analgesic effects having amnesia. 
So all these four words are basically making the definition of anesthesia. Unconsciousness, reversible, analgesia, and amnesia. So anesthesia is defined as reversible production of unconsciousness with analgesic effect having amnesia. So that's how uh, simple the definition of anesthesia is. Next, uh, we have uh, types of anesthesia. Basically, we have three types of anesthesia. Number one is local. Number two is regional. And number three is general anesthesia. Now, uh, first of all, uh, we can see what is local anesthesia. It is loss of sensation of pain in circumscribed area. Yani, aapne, uh, let's suppose this is a limb, hai, hai? animal keep, and you have infiltrated the anesthesia over here, like you have inducted here, 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 and here. So there will be loss of sensation in this circumscribed or in this surrounding area only. So animal will be having pain relief in this area. This is reversible too. And uh, number third, there is no amnesia like animal will be having the memory of what is going to happen when the local anesthesia is injected in that part then uh, number two we have regional anesthesia it is insensibility to pain in a larger no limited body area uh, you will understand this better by this diagram now if you talk about local anesthesia and you infiltrate here like aap ne kya karna hai ki aap ne ek syringe leni hai theek hai uske andar aap apna anesthetic agent fill karenge and you will inject a little bit of here little bit of here and little bit of here so with local anesthesia only the surrounding area a little limited surrounding area is going to be having loss of sensation of pain that is going to be anesthetized but when we talk about regional anesthesia in the regional anesthesia the whole, uh, what we have said insensibility to pain in a larger though limited but larger body area now what will happen that let's suppose you have uh, an udder surgery here is the udder of animal and you have to perform an udder surgery so to perform that surgery you will go for regional anesthesia and that regional anesthesia will do what that it will cover this whole portion of the body so you can say one region of the body that is hind quarter is being anesthetized and how we perform this anesthesia uh, like uh, how we induce uh, this anesthesia uh, when there are the term, there is a term called as nerve block Basically, you know that this is the brain of animal and this is spinal cord. This is central nervous system and this is spinal cord. From the spinal cord, uh, different neurons will come out and what they do, they uh, basically innervate a larger portion of the body. From here, innervations will come for this thoracic cavity and like that. Basically, what how we uh, get uh, like go for uh, regional anesthesia is that we we block these nerves, we inject an anesthetic agent into these nerves. So when this nerve will going when this nerve will be blocked, so what will happen? That from that point, all the area that is being innervated by this nerve will get anesthetized. That area will be having loss of sensation of pain, so that is that is called as regional anesthesia. Basically, uh, regional anesthesia is used in the ruminants, ruminants, and horses. In small animals, we don't go for regional anesthesia. We prefer general or local. But uh, this specific regional anesthesia is a technique that is used in the large ruminants. And when we will study the uh, anesthesia of large ruminants, then uh, we will see in detail uh, this uh, regional anesthesia. And we will talk about all those nerve blocks that are used in field practices. So uh, that is regional anesthesia. I hope you have understood this. Then comes the general anesthesia. It is defined as drug-induced unconsciousness that is characterized by 
कंट्रोल्ड रिवर्सिबल डिप्रेशन ऑफ सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम एंड परसेप्शन यानी कि किसी ड्रग के, के लगाने के बाद uh, एक ऐसी अनकॉन्शियसनेस की स्टेट जो कि कंट्रोल भी हो एंड दैट इज रिवर्सिबल टू एंड दैट इज कॉजिंग द डिप्रेशन ऑफ सी एन एस एंड डिप्रेशन ऑफ परसेप्शन इसका मतलब यही आ गया कि देर विल बी एमनेजिया या आप ये भी कह सकते हैं कि द थिंग दैट डिफ्रेंशिएट लोकल एंड जनरल एनेस्थीजिया इज एमनेजिया दैट एमनेजिया विल बी प्रेजेंट इन जनरल एनेस्थीजिया बट नॉट इन लोकल एनेस्थीजिया सो इफ यू कम बैक टू दिस डायग्राम अगेन सो इन केस ऑफ जनरल एनेस्थीजिया वट यू आर गोइंग टू हैव इज यू विल इन जेटर ड्रग आइर आई एम और आई वी एंड आफ्टर दैट the whole body is going to be under an under an aesthetic effects yani puri body ke upar aap jahan marzi aapne incision jo hai chahe wo is portion mein dena hai cut lagana hai is portion ki koi koi surgery karni hai is portion pe koi cut lagana hai yani kisi bhi portion ki aapne surgery karni hai to aap को overall loss of sensation of pain jo hai animal ke andar milegi theek hai you are free to operate any portion of the body like but when you are having uh, nerve blocks or regional anesthesia you are only allowed to perform in that region only ye wala region uh, anesthetized hai to aap sirf in isi region ko manipulate kar sakenge is region pe kahin pe cut lagayenge to animal jo hai wo aapko response dega sharp response dega aggression dega theek hai lekin yahan pe yahan pe wo pain stimulus feel nahi karega theek hai so this is the basically uh, these were the types of anesthesia okay after that uh, we are going to see uh, some definitions uh, in this topic uh, that are important to know the differences between them what does they mean so number first term is analgesia analgesia is defined as loss of pain sensation in response to stimulation matlab ye ki aap animal ko cut laga rahe hain incise kar rahe hain but wo aapko aage se कोई रिस्पॉन्स नहीं देगा सो लॉस ऑफ सेंसेशन ऑफ पेन इज कॉल्ड एज एनल जिजिया नेक्स्ट टर्म इज नोसी सेप्शन इट इज कॉल्ड एज कॉन्शियस परसेप्शन ऑफ पेन यानी कि दिस टू आर यू कैन से ऑपोजिट टर्म्स नोसी सेप्शन का मतलब यह है कि दर्द का महसूस होना और एनल जिजिया इज दर्द का महसूस ना होना इन द नेक्स्ट टर्म वी हैव इज पेन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म दैट यू शुड बी एबल टू डिफाइन एंड इट इज डिफाइंड एज unpleasant sensory and emotional experience that is associated with actual actual or potential tissue damage yani ke aapko koi physical damage aapko ya animal ko hua hai aur us physical tissue damage ki wajah se jo sensory or emotional experience hai definitely wo unpleasant hi hoga to that unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual potential tissue damage is called as pain next term is tranquilization and it is defined as it is a behavioral change where the anxiety of the animal is relieved and patient becomes relaxed but it is aware of surrounding uh, like uh, iska matlab ye hai ki ek animal jo anxiety mein hai jo fearful hai stressful hai usko jab aap tranquilizers lagayenge tranquilizers un drug ko kehte hain that cause a tranquilization to jab wo tranquilizer drugs aap lagayenge to wo jo stress aur anxiety mein the they are going to be relieved from that anxiety aur animal kya hoga he will get relaxed but that relaxation won't be like okay he will be unconscious no he is going to be relaxed and conscious aware of surrounding wo sirf relax ho jayega and this is the drug class jiske liye hum do aur terms use karte hain आपने सुना होगा एनजियोलाइटिक्स और एंटी एनजाइटी ड्रग्स सो बेसिकली ट्रंकुलाइजर्स आर दो ड्रग्स दैट आर इंक्लूडेड इन दिस क्लास बिकॉज वट विल दे डू दे विल कॉज बिहेवियरल चेंजेस एनिमल विल गेट रिलैक्सड दीज आर एंटी एनजाइटी एंटी डिप्रेसेंट्स वॉट आर दीज आर ट्रंकुलाइजर्स देन वी हैव टर्म सीडेशन इट इज डिफाइंड एज सेंट्रल डिप्रेशन that is accompanied by drowsiness and some degree of centrally induced relaxation yani ke it is a central depression jisme animal uh, will be drowsy drowsy matlab ghanudgi mein hoga theek hai uh, tranquilization ke sath iska fark kya hai ki wo anti anxiety drugs the aur animal relax tha lekin wo unconscious nahi tha theek hai lekin yahan pe central depression hona start ho gaya hai theek hai to that depression 
बट नॉट वेरी डीप डिप्रेशन टू बी कॉल्ड एज एनेस्थीज या थोड़ा डिप्रेशन होगा बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं जिसमें सिर्फ खनूदगी होना शुरू होगी ड्राउजीनेस होना शुरू होगा ठीक है उसको हम कहते हैं सीडेशन basically uh, if i like more justify uh, this difference between uh, anesthesia and sedation uh, is that during anesthesia we have basically uh, four stages stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 that is basically made up of plane 1 plane 2 plane 3 plane 4 and then we have stage 4 we will study these stages in detail in some uh, separate uh, topic uh, but यहाँ पे ये बात इसलिए बता रही हूँ क्योंकि आई हैव टू टेल यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सिडेशन एंड एनेस्थीजिया व्हेन यू टॉक अबाउट सिडेशन व्हाट वी से दैट यू हैव एडमिनिस्टर्ड अ ड्रग टू द एनिमल और दैट ड्रग विल टेक एनिमल फ्रॉम स्टेज वन टू आइडर स्टेज टू और प्लेन वन जब तक एनिमल यहाँ तक रहेगा इसको हम कहते हैं सीडेशन बट When you administer a drug, an animal goes to either plane two, plane three. This is called as anesthesia. So you see, sedation. So you can say that that is uh, general anesthesia with very low dose. That it will take your animal to only plane one or stage two or stage three plane one, not further. from that but when you administer same drugs with higher doses it will cause general anesthesia and it will take animal to plane 2 and plane 3 yani ki ye zyada deep hoga ye deep nahi hoga aur jab hum in stages ko zyada detail mein padhenge to you will see that ye in stages tak hum uh, apni surgery start nahi karte hain hum in stages pe jaake surgery apni start karte hain because animal yahan pe abhi tak sirf ghanudgi ki halat mein hoga wo properly see, anesthesia mein nahi gaya hota wo properly uh, like unconsciousness mein nahi gaya hota wo pain perceive karta hai theek hai to sedation ye hai anesthesia mein kya hai anesthesia में यहाँ पे वो प्रॉपरली अनकॉन्शियस हो चुका होता है तो अगर हम यहाँ पे एक डिफरेंस का टेबल क्रिएट करके बात कर रहे हैं वर्सेस एनेस्थीजिया तो क्या है कि सीडेशन में जो एनिमल है दैट विल ओनली गो टू स्टेज टू और स्टेज थ्री प्लेन वन नॉट फर्दर इन दैट इन एनेसिजिया एनिमल विल श्योरली गो टू स्टेज थ्री प्लेन टू थ्री टिल दैट ओके इन सीडेशन एनिमल इज नियरली अनकॉन्शियस अनकॉन्शियस बट नॉट कंप्लीटली अनकॉन्शियस हेयर एनिमल इज कंप्लीटली अनकॉन्शियस In sedation, there will be response to painful stimulus, but in anesthesia, there will be no response to painful stimulus. So this is the difference between sedation and anesthesia. and the drugs uh, that cause sedation are called as sedatives similarly the drugs that cause tranquilization are called tranquilizers or anti anxiety drugs or anxiolytics next term uh, we have is narcosis and narcosis is defined as deep sleep that uh, from which Uh, patient cannot be easily aroused yani ke drug induced deep sleep drugs dene ke baad there will be a deep sleep from which you cannot arouse that animal easily then we have is hypnosis it is artificially induced sleep or trance resembling sleep that is resulting from moderate cns depression from which patient is readily aroused so you can see the difference it was deep sleep it was artificially induced sleep patient cannot be easily aroused patient is readily aroused so if you see uh, an animal in a state of deep sleep and uh, it is difficult to arouse that animal it means the animal is in narcosis but if the animal is able to be aroused then animal is in the hypnosis and similarly uh, the drugs that cause hypnosis are called as hypnotics and the drugs that cause narcosis are called as 
narcotics next term uh, we have is is balanced anesthesia acha before uh, defining this balanced anesthesia uh, there is one thing that you should know uh, it is called as uh, triad of anesthesia basically uh, scientists have taken three properties or characteristics of anesthesia as a triad of anesthesia and those three are number 1 unconsciousness number 2 is analgesia and number 3 is suppress reflexes yani ke anesthesia ki teen properties ek unconsciousness ek loss of sensation of pain that is analgesia and reflex suppress all those reflexes should be suppressed uh what reflexes uh, we will talk about these reflexes in detail when we will study the stages of anesthesia uh, but these reflexes include whole body reflexes eye reflexes laryngeal reflexes gag reflexes all those reflexes so based on this triad of anesthesia they have uh, divided uh, the anesthesia into two types number 1 is basal anesthesia and number 2 is balanced anesthesia they define basal anesthesia as all triad requirements can be acquired by single chemical use that when you will attain all these three things by use of single chemical that is called as basal anesthesia but there is other term balanced anesthesia all triad requirements required by using more than one chemical agent or uh, other way it is defined as anesthesia that is achieved by simultaneous use of multiple drugs so what does it mean ke basal ne to kaha ke humne ek hi diya chemical agent usse teenon cheeze hum achieve karwa de बट बैलेंस में क्या होगा क्योंकि बेजल एनेस्थीजिया कोई एसिड एग्जिस्ट करता ही नहीं है ठीक है कि जिससे हम एक ही एजेंट से सारी प्रॉपर्टीज जो हैं एनेस्थीजिया की कवर कर लें सो बेसिकली डी ऑलवेज गो फॉर बैलेंस्ड एनेस्थीजिया जिसमें क्या होता है कि एक केमिकल एजेंट ये दो चीज़ें प्रोवाइड कर देगा और दूसरा केमिकल एजेंट हमें तीसरी प्रॉपर्टी अटेन करवा देगा या एक हमें ये वाला करवा देगा एक एजेंट हमें ये वाली प्रॉपर्टी अटेन करवा देगा और एक एजेंट हमें से हमें ये वाली प्रॉपर्टी अटेन हो जाएगी सो आप तीन या दो या चार या पांच लाइक एजेंट्स जो हैं वो इंजेक्ट कर रहे होते हैं ठीक है और उनसे आप एक बैलेंस्ड एनेस्थीजिया अटेन करेंगे जब हम ड्रग क्लासेस सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम की पढ़ लेंगे और फिर जब हम जो हमारे पास एनेस्थेटिक कॉम्बिनेशन को देखेंगे तो तब आपको ये चीज़ ज़्यादा अच्छे तरीके से क्लियर हो जाएगी द नेक्स्ट टाइम वी हैव इज डिसोसिएटिव एनेस्थीजिया इज डिफाइंड एज एनेस्थीजिया दैट इज इंड्यूज बाई ड्रग्स डिसोसिएट थेमैकोपॉटिक एंड लिम्बिक सिस्टम basically this anesthesia is characterized by cataleptoid state where eyes remain open swelling reflexes are intact and skeletal muscles are contracted ab is baat ka matlab kya hai uh, first thing is ke jo dissociative anesthesia hai isko hum zyada detail se aage ja ke bhi dekhenge as even stay brief right now here kyunki yahan pe hum sirf definitions ko dekh rahe hain ye puri ek drug class hai and when we will see और स्टडी दीज ड्रग क्लासेस तो वहाँ पे हम इन चीज़ों को ज़्यादा डिटेल नहीं देंगे बट राइट नाउ यह है कि जो हमारे एनेसिजा हमने एनेसिजा के स्टार्ट में बात की थी तो हमने बेसिकली क्या कहा था कि हमारे पास इस कंपोनेंट्स क्या है अनकॉन्शियस एनर्जी रिवर्सिबल एंड एमनेजिया अनकॉन्शियसनेस का मतलब क्या है अनकॉन्शियसनेस का मतलब यह है कि एनिमल की आंखें बंद होंगी ठीक है तो ले और उसके अलावा उसको पेन सेंसेशन है या रिवर्सिबल है ठीक है ये सारा कुछ है इसमें ना एक दो और बातें हैं जो कि हम जब जनरल एनेसिजिया की प्रॉपर्टीज पढ़ेंगे आगे जाके तो वहाँ पे लाइक आई डिस्कस दैन देयर बट यहाँ पे टू अंडरस्टैंड और टू मेक डिसोसिएटिव एनेसिजिया अंडरस्टैंडिंग ईजी Uh, मैं बता देती हूँ कि uh, जो एनेस्थीजिया है ना इसमें एक कॉम्पोनेंट बहुत ज़रूरी होता है वो है मसल रिलैक्सेशन ठीक है यानी कि मसल्स भी रिलैक्स हों अदरवाइज कॉन्ट्रेक्टेड मसल्स के साथ आप फिर बहुत ही सर्जरीज के अंदर लिमिटेशन आ जाती हैं जैसे जो ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जरीज होती हैं जो बोन की सर्जरीज हैं उसमें सारी बात आपने मसल कट करना है और अंदर आपने बोन को ऑपरेट करना है तो ऐसी सर्जरीज में फिर हमें मसल रिलैक्सेशन बहुत ज़रूरी चाहिए होती है तो ये है कि जो डिसोसिएटिव एनेसिजिया है उसको सेपरेटी सेपरेटी क्यों हमने रखा हुआ है उसकी रीज़न क्या है कि ये एक ऐसा ड्रग ऐसी एनेस्थीजिया की स्टेट है जो थलमैकोकॉटिक और लिम्बिक सिस्टम ये दो ब्रेन के सिस्टम्स हैं इनको 
आपस में डिसोसिएट करती है और डिसोसिएट इस तरह करेगी कि वो जो स्टेट होती है उसको हम कहते हैं कैटा लेप्टोइड स्टेट है मतलब क्या है इसका कि ये एक ऐसा एनेस्थेटिक एजेंट है या इस इस क्लास में जो भी एनेस्थेटिक एजेंट है वो ऐसे हैं कि उसमें जानवर की आंखें सर्जरी के दौरान या एनस्थीजिया के दौरान ओपन रहेंगी स्वेलिंग रिफ्लैक्सेस भी ओपन रहेंगे और साथ साथ उसके मसल्स भी कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड रहेंगे ठीक है तो ये प्रॉपर्टीज़ मिल के क्या करती हैं डिसोसिएटिव एनस्थीजा की क्लास को बनाती है बाकी वी विल सी द डिटेल ऑफ हाउ थर्मैकोकॉर्टिक एंड लिम्बिक सिस्टम्स और इनके फंक्शन क्या हैं ये क्यों डिसोसिएट हो रहे हैं ये जब हम डिसोसिएटिव एनस्थीजा को पढ़ेंगे वी विल सी दो थिंग्स देयर सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट डेफिनेशन दैट शुड बी नोन टू यू while uh, studying anesthesia and an introduction to the drugs of central nervous system thank you